the door. Contact. We're coming in. Open the door now. Seattle Police. We all make mistakes. It's what makes us human and allows us to grow, evolve, and become better. But the cops in today's video made such huge blunders that they deserve to wear the title of dumbest police officer ever. Hands up. Do not release the dog with his hands up. Do not release the dog with his hands up. Do not. Do not. Do not. Do not. Get the dog off of it. Get the dog off of it. Get the dog. Members of law enforcement have authority over our well-being, our freedom, and even our lives. So when they make a dumb mistake, there should be hell to pay. There should always be repercussions for our mistakes. Otherwise, we'll never learn. However, reality is never that simple. Sometimes cops do really stupid things, and they get away with it. Will that be the case in today's lineup of dumbest cops? Let's find out. All right, listen. I'm gonna reach you your rights real quick. All right. Telling you guys that oh God, I can confirm where I was and I can even confirm my activities. This is Samuel Scott Jr., a black man who had the audacity to call the cops once his car got stolen. And what did the cops do? They figured he was the suspect, so they arrested him. But let's take a step back and start from the beginning. On November 13th, 2018, Samuel Scott Jr. was visiting his aunt. Once he left her house at around 5.40 p.m., he noticed his 2006 Jeep Compass was missing, so he called police to report it being stolen. Several police vehicles converge at the scene, and Scott is immediately detained and handcuffed. Do you have anything behind your back for me? Uh-huh. Put your hands behind your back for me. 4 3 I'm going to be in the I'm going to explain to you in a minute. Do that report for me when I get it? No, I got him. I got him on my car. Make sure you complete that report because I need that. Okay. okay. Where's your ID? Right there. You're going to take all your stuff? We can't take this? Or this? Where's, um, you know, what about my kids? I mean, I, I, I literally, I went over there to see my kids and everything. Where are your kids? I was with them. <laughs> Where are they? They were over there at my cousin's house. So, huh? Why? I've been over there since, what? I want to say at five, what? 5.30, 6 o'clock? I, I actually walked back over here. You have two IDs? Yeah. That's not good. Well, one is an ID and one is a driver's license. Are you going to take this kids or something, or am I going to take this? If you need to take, uh -huh. okay, we'll get the story together, I'll let you know what's up, okay? Hats off to Mr. Scott for taking all this so lightly. His kids could have seen their dad through the window, and it could have traumatized them for life. He explains that he left them at his cousin's house and then walked back here. But wait, there has to be something else, right? Because this just doesn't make sense. Here's the backstory. Officer Jonathan Guzman, the one who you watch put Mr. Scott in handcuffs, actually saw his car going 20 miles per hour over the limit. So, he followed it. He witnessed the driver crashing into another vehicle and then fleeing the scene. He didn't see the driver's face, but described him as a six foot two heavy set black male wearing a white tank top and fleeing the scene. And that really resembles Mr. Scott, right? Who had a white undershirt, not a tank top, beneath the t-shirt. When the officers explain to Mr. Scott he looks like the suspect, he has a clever response. I'm telling you guys that oh God, I can confirm where I was and I can even confirm my activities. I recently logged off of the VPN at my job. Okay. At what time? Roughly before I came over here, before I called you guys. But I'm telling you, you guys got the wrong guy. The description of the, car, of the guy that took off in your car is just like yours. But that's half of Miami, bald-headed with a beard. Uh, even if he had dreads, it dreads with a beard. But then that's, it's not fair. I mean, like like I said, my kids, I called because my car got stolen. And my kids are over there. They don't even know what's so going on. So what time was your car stolen? I told you, probably around about five. I didn't pay attention to the time. I really just jumped out of the car to go see. That's it. If you want, like I said, we can go. Like, I had my kids and stuff like that. Dropped them off. Came over to, to say hi. 
and I went, I mean, I don't know what happened. I don't. I mean, like I said, I know the people that stay across there, over here, all over the place. I don't know what happened. We often come upon situations where police officers just fail to recognize and acknowledge signs and information. Mr. Scott's story sounds perfectly reasonable and plausible. It's more than likely that another man who resembles Mr. Scott in stature could have stolen his car. So why wasn't any of this taken into account? Instead, not only do they detain Mr. Scott, but also decide to arrest him. My car just somebody jumped in, drove off. And I'm sorry, but I'm telling you, I didn't, I didn't do it. I mean, literally, I, I mean, why would I call the police? <laughs> I mean, I call because my car is stolen. I mean, I, how me and my kids are going to get home? My pillow, my, my work ID, my work stuff, all of that stuff is in there. Why would I? That's why I'm like, what? what's, why am I in handcuffs? If I'm calling them and, and, and I'm. Uh, just give me a second, okay? Right. I'm open the window so you can hide them. Again, the cops fail to acknowledge that any of this could be true. For that reason, these cops are some of the dumbest cops ever. Or if they're not dumb, they're just evil. Listen to what this cop says when Mr. Scott tries to explain that he's a decent human being. You never been arrested before? No. You sure about that? Yeah. Never been arrested. Ex military. What? Are you sure about that? Do you need any more proof that this was a prejudiced induced arrest? It's like this dumb cop cannot wrap his head around the fact that this man has not been to jail before. It's ludicrous. Soon after, Mr. Scott was arrested and charged with leaving the scene of the accident, false reporting of a crime, failure to carry a concealed weapon license, and possession of marijuana. All the charges were later dropped, but Mr. Scott took matters into his own hands and filed a lawsuit against the city of Miami and the five dumb cops who were involved in his arrest. His lawyer's asking for $500,000 in damages. If this was California, the sum would be tripled. In case you don't know what I'm talking about, check out our video entitled When a Suspect Sues Cops and Actually Wins. Not all dumb cops harm innocent civilians. Some do it to themselves, like these TikTok star wannabes. This Orange County Sheriff's deputy has been punished for a video she posted on TikTok. Yet, despite the punishment, she continues to create new videos while wearing her uniform. The punishment came down when her supervisor apparently saw her streaming on TikTok Live while on duty. She was reprimanded, put footage from her TikTok account surfaced, and she came under investigation. Her colleagues felt the videos were inappropriate and embarrassing. The officer, named Shelby Abramson, was suspended from her job for disobeying her superiors and unbecoming conduct. She claims the suspension came because of the explicit lyrics in one of the videos. Abramson has been creating TikTok videos of herself in uniform since shortly after she was hired by the agency less than two years ago. Those TikTok videos have earned her 80,000 followers. According to this internal report, although most of the videos Deputy Abramson posted were benign, some of the audio tracks contained foul language and sexually explicit lyrics. However, it seems she didn't learn her lesson. Or did she? Orange County Sheriff's Office does not allow employees to engage in social media activity that could negatively affect the public perception of the agency and directs employees to refrain from posting agency logos, uniforms, or similar identifying items on personal social media pages. Even so, she continued making videos, although as she claims off-duty. This is what she had to say about her suspension. Okay, so I just kind of want to address that comment right there because that's not the first one that I've recently seen um, going around. So here we go. Okay, so regarding that, yes, I did get in trouble. Yes, I got suspended. But it was not for doing them on duty. Most of my videos were not done on duty whatsoever. And if it was done in a school, it was done either prior to kids getting there or after kids has already left the campus where I still need to actually be present on campus. My investigation and the reason why I got in trouble was because of the song choice that I did for um, that one video, nothing else. So maybe she did learn her lesson, maybe not. 
Some people feel that this behavior is degrading to police officers, but she claimed that she only wanted to show that cops are also human beings and not just bad guys behind a gun. I don't know about you, but I'd rather meet a bubbly, smiling officer in the street than a rugged type with a bad temper and itchy fingers. What about you? Do you agree? Similar to Deputy Adams, another female officer took to TikTok, but her public announcement caused an uproar, and rightfully so. This is Federal Way Police Department Officer Brianna Strauss, and she decided to make a smug public service announcement to all the drivers out there. Take a look at this. PSA to everyone out there. I'm speaking for myself, but I'm probably speaking for a large majority of other officers out there. If we're driving on the freeway in our police car, get the f out of the way. Get the f out of the way. If you merge and we follow behind you and we merge too, you're probably in trouble. The best way to find that out is get the f out of the way. I can go 90 miles an hour. You can't. You can't do that. So get the f out of the way. If us officers stay behind you long enough, we can find a reason to pull you over. So you might as well get the f out of the way. Super simple. That's all. You're welcome. Jeez. Can she be more cringy? First of all, her entire demeanor is pompous and authoritative. She acts like she's better than everyone else and has more rights than everyone else just because she has a badge and drives a cop car. That's the top reason people don't like cops, and she's blatantly rubbing it in our faces. What was the point of this public service announcement? And to make it even worse, she got suspended for only one shift. On the other hand, Deputy Abramson got suspended for three weeks on account of her bubbly dancing. Which one do you think was worse? Speaking of bubbly girls flaunting their beauty and charm, let's hop over to Myrtle Beach in South Carolina, where professional acrobat Samantha Panda was placed in handcuffs after a Karen at the beach reported her bikini. Her friends got involved and started filming and questioning the officers. Sam, Sam, just relax. Just relax, all right? Well, no, no, no. So, she, what is, she's, she's, being detained. she's being detained right now, okay? Right. Okay, and, and how is that? No. Uh, how how is she just acting in, in, in your eyes? That, that's all I want to see. I just want to. No, she didn't say that. She she asked you. She asked you if she wants to, if you can show her the the penal code that says or the law that says. And you said no. You come here, officer. We can explain to you too. I can hear you. I'm right now. Can I just get your please? No. You're coming to a bar. We're just going to show you. The, the I just feel like I'm, I'm, I'm asking here. I'm asking you to come to my car so I can get out the If you want to see it, you have to come to the car. Right. 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 Really uncomfortable. This what is this reasoning? We're not going anywhere, you're not going to to what? what? So why is it illegal to, to wear to have a bikini on the beach? I literally wear this to the beach every day. I want us to day. show you. We're going to show okay, you. Ab absolutely. The officers escorted the ladies and their friend to the police vehicle and proceed to show the ordinance, yet they fail to acknowledge their own stupidity. The ordinance clearly says, and I quote, it shall be unlawful for any person to appear in the nude on any public beach, beach access to the public waters, or any public property in the view of the public. Of the public. I'm not so nude. So nobody's nude. There's nobody I'm nude not right nude. now. Okay, you're, you're in a thong. No, okay. Thong is, thong is not nude. All right. An anus, a vagina, are nude. All right. Just an 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 anus and a vagina are nudity. A thong is not nudity. Okay. All right. Have, having your nipples exposed is not against the law, as long as it is not in a sexually explicit manner. No, I'm serious. You put me in handcuffs for being in a call. As long as it's not in a sexually explicit manner, and there's no sexually, there's nothing sexually explicit about this. Look at the other officer, scrolling through the manual, looking for a way out. This is one of the dumbest things I've ever seen. Prior to deciding to place a young woman in handcuffs, did it not occur to them that in the 21st century, wearing a thong is probably not considered nudity? Maybe they should have consulted the manual in depth before taking actions like depriving someone of their freedom. He even asked the guy this. Okay, hey, nude, in the nude. This is not considered nudity. There is clothing covering their private parts. You know what anatomical areas are? 
I do know what anatomical areas are. Expression and of the buttocks. No, no, it's not. Okay, well then, then, then there, there's other girls that have that have their cheeks cheeks exposed. So, so do the same thing to them. Go put them in handcuffs. It's simple. Like, like if just because just because she she has a bikini that that is more more revealing does not mean that she's in the wrong. There are other bikinis. Like, look, I can see her butt cheeks. I can see. I mean, shows your butt. That's why your butt is not illegal. Nothing in there says thong. Um, any quote-unquote private parts are not uncommon. Or, yeah, none of our private parts are uncommon. Where does, Where does it say? It doesn't say that. It says nudity. I'm not nude. There's no nudity going on here. Just notice the defeated look on the other officer's face. He knows they're beaten. He's praying that his partner can muster up something from the rule book, but hopes for that are slowly fading away. The girl's male friend must have noticed that look as he decided to heat things up. And Acrobat Panda over here is about to make it weird. Can we have names and badge numbers, please? Yeah. Well, this is Zach Raffi. I know his wife, actually. It's Guy's uh, ex fiance. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, she pierced my nipples. Uh, and then badge number? I know, I know. Sam, Panda, Zach, Rafi, Kyle, Dick. This has to be made up, right? Only it isn't. It's all too real, but weird names aside, the cause for all this is Myrtle Beach's controversial code, which, believe it or not, currently does state that thong bathing suits are not allowed on the beach or in public. Perhaps it's a newer code that attempts to be more precise, or it's just that these two cops are too dumb to find the clause in their code. However, code or not, arresting someone because they're wearing a thong is ridiculous, and it could have been conducted in a peaceful manner. But Officer Dick is about to escalate things even further, and Officer Raffi has a problem with nipples on Panda's friend. Then, what, you're just gonna sit here and argue with us. Why? Because you don't like the way we're dressed? No, the way we're dressed. Okay. No. Again, I'm talking to her. Okay, I un I understand you're talking to her, but no, I'm, I'm on a public beach. I'm on a public beach. I, look, we have our social distance. We have our social distance. Also, why are you guys not recording right now? Uh, you have no reason to do okay. It doesn't make any sense. You literally told me yes, that it's nudity, and I'm not no, gay. Because of the so way you're if you're telling us that we're dressed inappropriately for the beach, and we say, okay, we'll go home, can we just go home? I'm so uncomfortable, like I just want to go home. Soon, another officer arrives at the scene. After a brief consultation with Officer Raffi, he approaches the girls and engages in conversation to learn more about their side of the story. It seems that this conundrum lies in the vague Myrtle Beach code, which can obviously be interpreted in various ways. Jimmy Jam? Jimmy Jam, yeah. So. Geez, here we go with the weird names again. Jimmy Jam is actually John, one of Panda's friends, but there's not much he can do over the phone. The argument continues back and forth, pretty much the same way it did earlier, but at least this officer has the common sense to order Dick to remove the handcuffs. He then goes to his car to have a better look at the code on his computer and explains that thongs that reveal the majority of the butt cheeks, as well as tops that reveal nipples, are not acceptable. Well, here's the thing. The way you guys are dressed, I said, if your butt is hanging out, yes, that is a violation of our city ordinance, which I'm very sorry. So, every, are you going to address the they're, 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 I'm just curious. They're in bathing suits that are covering up the majority of they're behind or whatever. No, nope, but they're not you, though. You, like you, they might be an inch with, more than mine. Well, you, know, you have to put on something. It, we, it, it, you cannot have a phone on this thing. It's exposed. You can't do it. It's, it's but why is there 
So what's what's considered a thong? Because that's a Brazilian cut bikini. We're, we're not getting I, Brazilian cut. Well, it does matter because, because if no. I'm going to go right buy a bikini, I would like to know well, if I can well, wear it. But our ornament just says buttocks. That's all. It says. So, so okay, so so, so then so then that's a buttocks uh, over there. So. Obviously, this topic raises a lot of ethical issues. How much of a buttock can be seen? Who measures this? Should we free the nipple or not? Who will be the judge of what's appropriate and what's not? It's not an issue that can be solved with a vague manual because it directly affects people's freedom to express themselves. Sam Panda took to Facebook in the following days to express how appalled she was at this. I love dogs, and I'm of the firm belief that there are no bad dogs, just bad owners. In the case of Jadarius Rose, a dumb canine operator released the dog on the defenseless man, even though he was ordered not to do so. Rose was a truck driver. Even though he was 23 years old at the time, he looked like a kid, and in that situation, he acted like a kid. The incident started when a police officer decided to pull him over for a missing mud flap. Rose stopped at first, but then kept going, so the cop called for backup and engaged in pursuit. This is the moment he pulled over, but seeing the guns aimed at him, he continued driving. Notice the gun this officer's aiming with. Now it wasn't a high-speed pursuit by any stretch of the imagination. Thing is, this kid had done nothing wrong. It's just that when he pulled over and saw all the guns pointed at him, he got scared. He then actually called his mother and asked her what to do. She told him if he'd done nothing wrong, he should stop. But then he rolled down the windows and saw the guns again and did not feel safe at all. So instead of getting out, he continued driving and called 911, hoping they could help him. In case you think that's crazy, listen to this. A 911 call that his attorney indicated was Rose seems to confirm that he was afraid. I parked the truck and um, I was about to comply with them, but they all uh, had their guns drawn out for whatever reason. Um, it seemed like they're trying to kill me. You need to comply with them. I mean, what was he expecting to hear from the operator? This just goes to show how inexperienced and really afraid he was. As the operator instructed him to obey the officers, Rose eventually did, but little did he know what was in store for him. Notice there's a bunch of law enforcement vehicles, including Ohio State Highway Patrol and the Sheriff's Office. And that's when this happened. Hey, that's a dog! Come to me! You know one bit! Come to me, man! Do not, do not, do not let them, re don't release the dog. Do not release the dog with his hands up. Do not release the dog with his hands up. Do not release the dog with his hands up, don't. Do, do not, do not, do not, get the dog off of it. Get the dog off of it. Get the dog. As you can imagine, horrific wails ensue from the young driver, pleading for the officers to get the dog off of him. However, the dog does what he was trained to do and does not let go that easily. At this point, the dog still does not let go, and you can see the female officer cover her face in disbelief. Even when the dog is finally off, the kid continues screaming, most likely out of shock more than just the pain. And all the officers seem to be taken aback by what just transpired. And this young man's ordeal isn't over yet. I, I say I'm not 
they have one in motor unit or whatever. Yeah. You know what you Was that not loud enough? Yeah, you said it three, you four like moments. Time. <laughs> But then we have the front rear tire on the rims, 32 right lane. They have one in route. Surprise. 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 Surprise.
Should Speakman's termination be rescinded? Should he be paid and reimbursed for all lost wages, seniority, and benefits lost resulting from his firing? And his employee record and sponged of his termination history? Let me know what you think of that in the comments below. I bet that last clip got your blood rushing. So, since we're all amped up and ready for action, let's follow a couple of officers as they bravely break down the door to an apartment where an intoxicated man was causing a scene and apparently having a mental breakdown while throwing things out of the window. Seattle Police Department! Open the door! We're coming in! Open the door now! Now this looks a little drastic, doesn't it? Well, the thing is, there were several reports. One said that the man was hanging out of the window, while the other said that the suspect was trying to push someone out the window. So it's perhaps justified that these officers would break the door with guns drawn, even without a warrant, if they feared for the victim's safety. However, pretty soon they realize that there's no broken window and there's no suspect. I mean, there wasn't even any mess on the street, but they failed to realize that. Meanwhile, the woman in the apartment is taking a bath, so she doesn't even hear the cops shouting until they're already inside the apartment. Right, we're moving we're moving Show me your hands! Hello? Yeah, please, me. What the f What the f inside? What the f Who else is inside? Who else is in here? There's no broken window. The reason why there's no broken window is that the cops did not just miss the apartment, they missed the entire building. The dispatcher said that the incident was at 3028 First Avenue, but these cops decided to go to 3016 First Avenue, which was half a block away from the actual location. But it takes some time until they realize their mistake. What Better late than never, cops are now certain that they're at the wrong place. In reality, they barged into the apartment of a 45-year-old therapist named Elizabeth Wren. Instead of apprehending the suspect, they were now faced with a sobbing, shaking, traumatized woman. The officers then try to explain themselves, but little good that does. Imagine if someone burst into your house while you were in the shower and held you at gunpoint. It must have been scary, and she must have felt like her rights as well as her privacy were violated. Not to mention she could have been shot by a trigger-happy cop. Now she's standing in the hallway, probably half naked. Okay, I'm sorry. Answered the door, okay? I understand. I did not hear Seattle Police 
Oh. I'm sorry about that. We thought that you were the victim and you were being held captive inside of this room. Right now, there's someone else about to fly out of a window. So they're going to go do that. We're going to have a supervisor come over and we're going to talk to you through that. <laughs> I understand it's very, very jarring. I'm so sorry that this happened. Okay, it was incredibly dumb to go into the wrong building, right? But this cop handled this situation quite professionally. He could have just said sorry and stormed out of there and let the supervisor deal with it. But he stuck around, explained the situation in more detail, and tried to calm the woman down. He even apologized multiple times. So that part was handled properly, and considering the circumstances, they were authorized to enter the apartment. Just not that one. Elizabeth Wren is, of course, suing the city of Seattle. Seattle Police Department is getting sued after breaking down the front door and charging into the wrong apartment. The woman who lived there claims she's still traumatized from that day three years ago. Tonight, King Five spoke with her attorney. And it was all unnecessary. Seattle Police! Wren was getting ready to take a bath when police suddenly entered her apartment. She realized how close she came to losing her own life. For no reason, she had a teapot in her hand, a metal teapot. Well, what if she had grabbed a kitchen knife? What if she had grabbed anything else that the police would have construed as a weapon? Let us know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for being here, and keep a lookout for the next Hidden File.